Hi, I'm Serben Yakov. This presentation covers the design of a controllable inductor. We assume that the inductor is wound on a ferromagnetic core, which has a magnetic path length of LE, a cross section area of the core of AE, and we have n number of turns uh, on the core. Now, the inductance we, that we are going to see is expressed in this equation, which says that the inductance is equal to the number of turns square, the area, cross-section area of the core, mu is the permeability, and Le is the magnetic path length. Now, mu is actually the product of the initial or vacuum or air permeability times the relative permeability, that is how much is the actual permeability larger than the uh, reference one. Now the idea is that uh, permeability is actually the ratio between B and H. B is the magnetic flux density, H is the magnetic field, and this is a typical curve that connects the two. Now, Permeability is B over H, but the local permeability, that is at a given point, it'll be the local slope. And as we can see, due to the shape of this curve, which sort of reaches saturation at a given uh, B value, the slope is changing. And consequently, in this equation here, mu is changing, and therefore L will change. So by Feeding a current, a DC current, we can move the magnetic field from, say, here to here, and we are doing it by injecting a DC current. This will change H, and we'll move from one point to another. By this, we are going to change the permeability, and therefore, we're going to change the inductor. It looks, then, that we can realize this controllable uh, inductor by adding bias winding on a core, which is the inductor, on which the inductor is wound, feeding a DC current. We can feed the current, say, by putting a uh, DC voltage source, for example. There is a big problem here, however. The problem is that there is coupling between these two windings. And the reason is that due to a current that you will have in the inductor, you'll generate a flux, and the flux will cause a voltage, and this voltage is coupled between here and here. So call this one V1 and this is V2. So actually, it's like a transformer. So once you put a, a DC source here, you are actually shorting out uh, the second winding, and this short will be shown from here, and actually you'll sort of uh, ruin the whole idea of the inductor, because it's going to be a short circuit, as a matter of fact. So maybe a possibility is to put here, say, a current source. Well, uh, this could be perhaps okay, except that we really don't have current sources. Uh, we'll have somehow to build a circuit that will behave like a current source, or we can put a very large inductor in series with a voltage source. This would be okay because the very large inductor here will sort of block the AC from getting into the source. But then, of course, it's a big inductor and uh, it's going to be expensive, of course. So we have a problem of the cross coupling. But then there is another problem. The problem is that with this idea here, the initial inductance is very large because we are starting here with no bias. And then we have to move from here to here. So at the very beginning, the inductance looks very large. And only after feeding in the uh, DC will actually move to the value that we need. Now, in the initial inductors of a ferromagnetic material, a ferrite is in the range of 2,000 to 4,000, and I'm talking to about the relative uh, permeability. For power inductors to store energy, the relative permeability has to be lower, and it'll be in the range of, say, 100 uh, normally. So we start with extremely large permeability, which means very large inductances, and only after feeding the current, we'll move 
to this area plus the fact that of course uh, we have the cross coupling effect that would need some sort of a large inductor in order to decouple uh, the two voltages so we have these two problems with this very simple which is uh, actually impractical uh, to build we can overcome the coupling problem by having two cores will be similar cores identical cores same size and we are going to have the inductor winding here in the middle on the two cores and the bias winding in series here in such a way well look at the dots here that they generate the same voltage here and consequently when i look from here through the bias uh, terminals uh, they'll cancel each other because it's all symmetrical and therefore I'm going to see zero voltage here so by this I actually got rid of this cross coupling effect however this initial inductance problem still remains this conceivably could be overcome by putting a gap in each of these inductors so as to have the initial inductance low that is at the very beginning without bias we'll start with an inductance which is uh, maybe a little bit higher than what we need because we're going to decrease it but still it won't be that large as we had it before what this uh, gap is doing is actually modifying the bh curve from the original one to something like this notice that the uh, mu is indeed much lower and here now uh, we have a local permeability this is the slope here at uh, this h2 now due to the fact that this uh, curve has been modified in order to get the same slope or local permeability that we had before say at h1 with the original cur curve we now have to move to h2 which means that in this case we're going to need a very heavy current in order to push the uh, core into saturation so we have solved this one we have solved this one but still we have this problem of large bias current this problem is overcome by this core design which is shown here that has been suggested in 94 in a paper uh, in a conference paper the link can be found in the comment area of this uh, clip the basic idea of this design now is first of all to have a gap so we start with a low inductor. Secondly, we have this uncoupling by having the two windings with uh, voltages which sort of cancel each other. There is, however, a very important feature here is that a magnetic flux now circulates within a ferrite portion which has no gap. We are actually, as far as the bias is concerned, working on the original BH curve which means that we actually can use a lower magnetic field to bias the core that is we can use a lower current so this actually solved the cross coupling effect the problem of large initial inductance and the large bias next i'm going to carry out some mathematical uh, derivation to show the effect of this uh, bias on the uh, total permeability or in fact the relative permeability of this core now to do the analysis what we're going to do we're going to sort of fold the core on itself so we'll get something of this nature which sort of represent the core as far as the magnetics is concerned now we have in this core now three parts we have the outer part which is magnetized and driven into towards saturation we have the original ferrite this is this portion here which has the original permeability or relative permeability and we have a air gap here which is the air gap shown here responsible for the initial value of the inductor now the length of these magnetic paths are uh, lt for the magnetized part and then we have lc for the total length of the ferrite which is sort of untouched and then we have a this a length of lg for the air gap now the total length the total path uh, is lg plus lp plus lc now the circular integral of h over the whole length will be ht times lt 
where Lt is the total length and Ht is actually the equivalent total magnetic field. Now the magnetic field in each one of the parts is different. Here we have an H sub G in the air gap. Here we have H sub sub p here we have h sub c these are different magnetic fields strength in each of these parts while the flux density or flux itself is the same because the flux is sort of flowing throughout here and therefore the b which is the flux over the cross-section area is the same so what we are doing is we're going to represent the equivalent magnetic field by B over mu T and mu T is the equivalent total permeability. And then similarly, we're going to do it for all the three sections. So with some further manipulation, I am getting uh, this expression. Now, let's look at the values of these terms here especially let's look at the original ferrite original ferrite has a very high permeability as we have said mu r uh, could be in the range say of 3000 as compared to 50 or 100 for the permeability that we would need and we are going to get by the uh, bias so this value is very high as compared to this and this and therefore, I'm going to cross out this term as a approximation of the calculation. And then with some further manipulation, I'm getting this equation. So let's see some limit cases in order to get an impression of what this equation actually means. Let's first of all assume that we are unbiased. That is, the permeability of this part here is very high and sort of goes to uh, infinity. So in this case, uh, this number is very large. Here it's very large. So this one is really small, can be neglected. And we get this value here, which is Lt over Lg. That is the relative permeability will be equal to the total magnetic path length divided by the length of the air gap. This is, by the way, a very known formula, an approximate equation for a relative permeability of gapped air. Because this now has nothing to do with the bias, it's just a regular core with a gap. If, however, we move the permeability of the outer leg here to where the, the permeability of air, or mu sub zero, then in this case, we can see that these permeabilities are the same and therefore it will be crossed out and we end up with this expression. This analysis shows that starting from this permeability, L sub T over L sub G, the normal permeability of a gapped core, we move to this value in which at the denominator we have added this length. Now this length is very much larger than Lg, which means that the relative permeability could be indeed lower than the original uh, permeability of the unit. This actually brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found the presentation of interest and the material uh, useful for you in the future. Thank you.